welcome back to my Evilness podcast. Today we are going to be talking about the true crime case of Sydney Loop. Sydney was 24 years old. She was from Lincoln, Nebraska. Her body was found dismembered in plastic garbage bags and thrown, they'd been just thrown into a field back in December in 2017. The two who were initially accused and then standing trial for Sydney's murder are Bailey Boswell, who was 24 at the time, and Aubrey Trail, who was 51 at that time, both also from Nebraska. Now, they're facing first-degree murder charges and also charges for the improper disposal of human remains. Trail is facing the death penalty for these crimes. Sydney was last heard from via a Snapchat selfie with the caption, Ready for my date? before going out with Bailey Boswell on the 15th of November in 2017. Her friends and family were immediately concerned when Sydney failed to show up for work at Menards, a Midwestern chain of home improvement stores. Her car was found still parked in the driveway of her home. Sydney's mother, Susan, reported her missing on the 16th of November. The first of Sydney's remains were discovered on the 4th of December. Tara Gerrick, one of Sydney's friends, was the last one to hear from her directly. Tara told the Wichita Eagle that Sydney had texted her and told her about the date she had, how great it was, and that she was excited to go on another date with this girl again on Wednesday night. Sydney had met Bailey Boswell on Tinder and they issued a statement after her death saying, We are deeply saddened by this horrific tragedy. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victim's family and loved ones, and we are fully cooperating with law enforcement in this investigation. According to a signed affidavit, Sydney and Boswell communicated via Tinder roughly 140 times leading up to the night of Sydney's disappearance. It also states that the last of those messages came from Bailey Boswell at 6.45pm, alerting Sydney that she was outside the residence. Tara insisted it was a habit of Sydney's to use caution before heading out to meet potential matches. She usually always sent a picture of the person that she was going on a date with, Tara told reporters. She'd let us know whether it was going to be at her house, their house, or in public. Sydney Loof was, according to a signed affidavit, dismembered with tools that the couple had bought at Home Depot, including a hacksaw, tin snips, and a utility knife. However, it took authorities almost eight months to gather enough evidence to officially charge Boswell and Trail. They were formally charged on the 11th of June 2018. The pair, who lived together in Wilbur, Nebraska, around 40 miles southwest of Lincoln, fled the area once police tracked the last GPS coordinates of Luce's cell phone to a cellular tower near their apartment in Wilbur, Nebraska. Police obtained a warrant to search their basement apartment after the building's landlord reporting, according to the affidavit, a strong odour of bleach, which was emanating from downstairs. It was quickly determined that portions of the apartment had been wiped down in an effort to clean them. The affidavit alleges that Trail strangled Sydney to death with an extension cord. 
With police on their tail, Boswell and Trail began uploading a bizarre series of videos onto social media insisting that they were innocent and that the police were trying to crucify them and that they were chasing them around like dogs. Now, this goes for like nine minutes, so I'm just going to play a little bit from the start. Good morning, Lincoln and Omaha and probably several other places. This is Aubrey Trail and this is Baby Boswell, I guess. Y'all also know her as Audrey. But we've spent the last few days watching ourselves being slammed and crucified in the newspapers and the news and everything else, so we thought it was time we had our say. Uh, we're not trying to defend anything. We're not trying to make you believe anything. We just feel we should get to say our side since everyone else gets to say theirs. Unlike the Lincoln Police Department and Salim County Police Department and all those folks, everything we're going to tell you, you're going to be able to pick up the phone or have a newspaper pick up the phone and very easily verify it. So that's basically just the start of the rant TV video. Wait on, let's skip forward. Like, uh, I get and all those other agents. And made our way to my house where we smoked wax and shatter and I gave her a quarter ounce of some really good weed. Uh, I went to take her home and she asked me to drop her off at a friend's house. So I did so. I gave her my number. We were planning to go to the casino that weekend. Um, I mean, I haven't heard from her since. I just, I really don't even know what else to say. I've been seeing all this stuff on the news presses and the ma- So that was just a little sentence. But Boswell even admitted having Luth, having been with Luth the night of her disappearance and admitted to another date the previous night yet insisted that although they'd hit it off, she hadn't seen her since, as you heard. Federal agents eventually found Boswell and Trail in a hotel near Branson, Missouri, on November 30th and brought them back to Nebraska on an unrelated fraud indictment. With the suspects in custody, police found additional disturb disturbing clues, footage of Boswell and Trail inside a Home Depot in Lincoln, Nebraska on the 15th of November. The affidavit states that at approximately 10.35 on that day, Aubrey Trail and Bailey Boswell are seen purchasing the tools and supplies believed to be used in the dismemberment and disposal of Sydney Loof, who was alive at the time and began her shift later that day at Menards, just before Sydney Luke went on her first internet arranged date with a woman who called herself Audrey on the 14th of November 2017, she texted a cautionary question. Just going to be me and you, right? She asked via the dating app Tinder. Yes, of course, responded Audrey. Audrey turned out to be Bailey Boswell, the girlfriend of Aubrey Trail. That's according to testimony in Wednesday's trial of Aubrey Trail, which will continue next week. This was an, in an article on the 4th of July, 2019. Trail 52 now and Boswell 25 are charged with first-degree murder in the slaying and dismemberment of Sydney Luke who disappeared on the 16th of November 2017, following a second date with Boswell, arranged over Tinder. This is a stuff from Trail's trial. Sydney's first date with Boswell on the 14th of November was only the two of them, but on their second date the next night, November 15th, they ended up at an apartment in Wilbur, which was shared by Boswell and Trail. And according to Trail's statements, Sydney died sometime that night during a sexual fantasy that involved choking with an electrical cord. 
Trail, who has served two stints in Nebraska prisons for bad checks and forgery, has claimed that Sydney agreed to participate in the fantasy for $5,000 and died accidentally when the choking went too far. Sometimes I just find it hard to say hard to be like, what the F? So. Prosecutors, during almost three weeks of testimony, laid out a much more sinister story, however. They said that Aubrey Trail had conspired with other people to lure a young woman to her death using social media. Three young women testified during the trial that they had met Boswell over Tinder and that they were then eventually introduced to Boswell's mm, sugar daddy, Aubrey Trail. The women whom a judge ordered not to be identified in any way to protect their privacy, said they received clothes and gifts and were given allowances of up to $200 a week by trail to join the group, which he boasted included 12 other witches. But there were rules to follow, the women testified, including participating in group sex with trail and Boswell, helping them steal and sell antiques and obeying their every wish. One of these women even said that gaps in her memory made her believe that she may have helped dispose of Sydney's body. These every wishes also included wearing no clothes in their apartment, accepting punishments, including whippings if they misbehaved. The women told jurors that Trail and Boswell spoke more than once about a desire to torture and kill someone. Women could become witches and gain powers. One woman said the pair intended to record and sell such a video for $1 million. There was also testimony that Boswell liked to inflict pain during sex. Whether Sydney was given the talk about becoming a witch or Trail being a sugar daddy is unclear. There has been no testimony during Trail's trial that such information was given given to her but there's also been no evidence that Sydney may have agreed to participate in any dangerous sex acts even though Trail's court appointed lawyers say that Sydney had money troubles at the time and Trail had said she was informed of her role and agreed to it okay I'm going to wrap up this one here and we will have a part two done really soon. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Hi, guys, and welcome back to my Evermost podcast. We have part two of the Sydney Loof true crime case today. Earlier in the trial, jurors heard more testimony about the travels of Trail and Boswell in the days following Sydney's disappearance on November 16, 2017. First, Trail and Boswell travelled to Council Bluff on the 17th of November after picking up a woman in Omaha who was in a sexual relationship with Bailey Boswell. Video surveillance from the American Star Casino showed the trio checking into a Holiday Inn on the casino property. FBI agent Mike Mastiff testified that on the 18th of November, Trail and Boswell left the hotel and travelled through Plattsmouth to Nebraska City, stopping at Walmart before heading west on a Highway 2 towards Lincoln. Mike said that at about 11.45am that day, Lincoln Police placed a phone call to a pinger number, i.e. one that is difficult to trace, that Bailey had been using to arrange dates via Tinder. Around the same time, the agent said data records from her cell phone ended, suggesting the phone might have been shut off. Apparently the pair then turned back east, stopping at a shop 
in Plattsmouth about 1.20pm before returning to Council Bluffs. Jurors also heard testimony from motel clerks in Grand Island and Kiani, where Trail Boswell and the woman they picked up stayed from the 19th of November through to the 22nd of November before returning to a Merry Star, the casino. According to testimonies, Trail and Boswell then stayed at motels in Iowa in Spencer and Ames before they travelled to Branson, Missouri, where they were eventually apprehended by authorities on the 30th of November. Testimony in Trail's trial was scheduled to conclude after a four-day break for the 4th of July holiday. Trail, again, wasn't present in court. He skipped most of the proceedings since he slashed his neck in court on the 24th of June, which I've written down a bit later on. I'll get to that. Sorry. Sydney's body was found in several black plastic garbage bags on the 4th and 5th of December 2017, scattered along gravelled roads in rural Clay County, Nebraska. Trail, in the videotaped interview played during his trial, said that Sydney's body was deposited in Clay County because a cemetery there was a special place in his beliefs. He added that the body parts were located in a certain way along the road ditches to spread her incarnation. I don't believe in the God you believe in, he told the agents as they questioned him in the interrogation room at the Saline County Jail. Trail's story about the intentional placement of Sydney's remains doesn't match previous testimony by law enforcement officials who have said that the body parts appeared to be randomly tossed into ditches. There has been no mention of any cemeteries in Clay County or any searches there in prior trail testimony. Trail, who had an antique business with Boswell and was convicted in 2018 with her of scamming a Kansas couple out of $400,000 in an antique deal, revealed fantasies, revealed on the tape, sorry, that he had a second occupation, conducting hardcore sexual fantasies for people whom he contacted over the internet. He said he paid up to $30,000 and once even staged a fantasy for a woman from Alabama who came all the way to Wilbur. Everything in the world is based on money, Trail had said, boasting that his life was sex, money and women. Trail rejected the suggestion that Sydney was forced to participate. It's always been, I'll pay you this much money, this is what you have to do, yes or no. Trail said. He added that another woman, a prostitute, was meant to participate in the choking fantasy, but it backed out, which had led him to suggest it to Sydney. The agents, Mike Mastiff and Eli McBride, expressed disbelief at some of Trail's comments. They told him to get back on the subject of Sydney's body. After several minutes passed, Trail said that he had drained Sydney's body of its blood and deposited the blood and her soul in a place that law enforcement had not located. I'm a low-down piece of shit, a monster, whatever, he said during the interrogation, but I'm not giving anyone up. That included unidentified women who he said he had paid for the sexual fantasy involving Sydney. In it, he said Sydney was supposed to be brought to the brink of death during sex. My job was to keep the monsters in the cage, he said of the fantasies. I'm not per se lying, Trail said at one point during the videotape. Am I covering some people's tracks? Yes. Am I going to make it easy for you? No. Trail, after being pressed by the FBI, denied that Sydney's heart was removed from the body and was cut up as the body was cut up, sorry. But it led to his discernation on his belief system, including that everyone who was there 
when Sydney had died, had to leave something they liked, which included a sex toy with the body parts, as part of an apology. More than once, Trail also maintained that he alone was responsible for Sydney's death and that Boswell was not present when Sydney had died. Trail claimed that Boswell was later forced to help cut up and dispose of the body. Jurors stared with troubled looks at the video as it played on three screens. Sydney's mother left the courtroom at one point. The mood in the court was by far the most sombre during the trial and this was after the photograph of the body parts were shared with jurors early in the week. You've already crucified us in the newspapers. You've already crucified us on Facebook, Trail said in the fa his Facebook video. You know, in America, I sure thought it was trial first, but I guess not. They're chasing us around like dogs. I wish the family the best. I wish Sydney the best. But as far as the police department, F you. Jurors rejected Trail's defence. Convicting him after less than three hours of deliberation. In the court records released, Trail told investigators he strangled Sydney with an electrical cord and said that Bailey helped him clean with bleach and get rid of the body. Authorities found Boswell's cell phone near the body also. Trail apparently admitted the murder to the Omaha World Herald in January 2018. I will say I am accountable for it, Trail told the paper in a phone call from a federal prison. The reason for it all will come out. So, about Trail slashing his neck in court. He slashed his neck, basically, and then requested a new trial. With a razor, the yelled, I curse you all, and then he slashed his neck in front of the deliberation, deliberating jury, basically, yeah, so I think it was just a show to try and get a new trial, or maybe the insanity defence, but in July, a jury found him guilty of first degree murder and cons conspiracy to commit murder. The publicity on his trial was widespread and it detailed weeks of testimony and evidence. On Bailey Boswell's trial got rescheduled. She also faced charges of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder and unlawful disposal of human remains for the killing and dismembering of Sydney Lutz. Um, the trial got a change of venue requested by her attorney Todd Lancaster his argument was that the media coverage of Trail's trial made it impossible for Bailey to get a fair trial in Saline County so it was moved to Lexington um, it was originally scheduled to begin March 2020 but it was postponed because the court had a family emergency. Uh, the conspiracy charge initially filed against her was dismissed in January 2020. In February 2020, a judge has ruled some evidence, specifically Bailey Boswell's relationship with other women and grooming them to engage in a conspiracy to commit murder, will be relevant in her trial for killing a northeastern Nebraska woman. Along with evidence regarding witchcraft or the occult. Boswell was found guilty of murder in the first degree, improper disposal of skeletal remains, conspiracy to commit murder. Um, her sentencing hearing has not yet been scheduled. Aubrey Trail was also found guilty of first degree murder, improper disposal of skeletal remains and conspiracy to commit murder. He is facing the death penalty or life in prison. He
His sentencing hearing was initially scheduled for December 2020, but it was delayed after his lawyer caught COVID-19. So now it is scheduled to take place in March 2020. So that is it for today's podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll get another one done really soon. Bye.